all the way from its inception, Microsoft DevBox has been all about creating ready-to-code virtual machines or dev boxes. The dev boxes should come fully loaded with the tools the developer needed, and they are meant to be tailored to each specific project. Which all sounds really good, and it does work fine, but there's just one big catch. To achieve this, you have always needed to create custom images. Now, custom images is not a bad thing in itself. It's just a whole lot of work to get them created, and they tend to get stale. In the world of Azure Virtual Desktop, we have a dedicated service to creating custom images in a simpler way. And you can also make use of the Azure Image Builder for DevBox images. But now we have an even better tool for Microsoft DevBox customizations. Yeah, I know the name is not really that impressive, but let me show you just how cool this is. The first kind of customizations to come to DevBox was individual customizations, where a dev could simply write a YAML file with the customizations they wanted and then upload that file during the creation of a dev box. And this was pretty cool because in those YAML files, they could define uh, which apps to install through WinGet, repositories to clone, or even PowerShell scripts to run. Later on, we even got the option to use WinGet configuration and that way have a uh, desired state configuration like experience. Let me quickly just show you how that would work as a dev. So in the DevBox portal, I would hit new DevBox. I would give it a fancy name like a demo DevBox, and I would select a DevBox pool, and then I would simply uh, check this apply customizations. Hit continue, and I'll upload a customization file. I could also choose from a customer. I could also choose from a repository, but again, only Azure DevOps is supported. So mm. now in my case, I upload a customizations file, select the one I want, hit open, hit validate, wait a couple minutes. And once the file is validated, I can hit continue. And then I see this beautiful little summary and then hit create. And now my dev box is being created. And at the end of the creation process, my customizations would be applied. Now the YAML file that I'm using here as a customization file, it's not a hugely advanced one. Uh, it simply uses the WinGet to install Visual Studio Code. And then it uses uh, WinGet to install Vivaldi. And then it uses the git clone task to clone my own repo and to the a folder on the local drive so it's not really advanced it's not really hard to make but it's quite neat to have all this done before i even log on to my dev box so you know uh, while that is being uh, created make sure that you like and subscribe and all that and i'll see you in a bit and now that my dev box has been created with the customizations, I can log into my dev box and see whether or not they have worked. Now in my YAML file, I did specify that uh, Vivaldi should be installed. And you can see that it is indeed installed. And, and let me see also if VS Code is installed. Yes, it is. And then there was that one little thing more. I did clone a repo. So let me just see if that is here as well. And see, git demo stuff. Yes, it's all here. Meaning that I now created a dev box from scratch, plopped in my YAML file with the customizations. And now my dev box is all customized with the changes that I wanted to have. Now, for this all to work, I had in had to add in support for these tasks in my dev center. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But before that, I wanted to first talk about one more thing, because we now even have team customizations in DevBox, which takes the, the individual customization feature to a new level. With team customization, we can take a YAML file, which looks just about identical to the one I showed you earlier, and apply it to all dev boxes created in a dev box pool. This means that as a project admin or team admin or whatever, you now no longer have to create custom images in order to supply your devs with their custom ready to code dev boxes. I, I mean, you could actually create custom images through 
team customer sessions, uh, but we'll get to that point as well. Let me first just show you how a um, working setup uh, looks like from you know an admin's perspective. So in the Azure portal here, uh, I'll go into Microsoft DevBox, I'll go to my dev centers, and I have my demo dev center here. And within that, I have a demo project. And within my demo project, I have some catalogs. Or in my case, I have one catalog. And this is my project catalog. And this is tied to a uh, GitHub repository that is linked down in the description. Um, but if I go into my project catalog here, you see that I have a DevBox customization, um, which is amply named DevBox customization. The type is image definition. So this is my DevBox uh, team customization file. And in one key thing to remember here is that for this to work, you have to go into sync settings here and check this box for image definitions uh, before you get this to work. And, and while we're on our project here, you can also go to um, image definitions. And here we have, see that I have my DevBox customization, which is based on the project catalog. Um, this means that I can use this image definition when creating uh, dev boxes. So you also see that I have the option to check this box and then click build in order to build an image from this dev box customization or this team customization file. Um, the, the difference between using a um, image definition and a, an actual custom image is just that when you use the uh, image definition, you would create uh, the dev box from the base image and then apply the customizations while building from a custom image would mean that you build uh, a source VM, apply the customizations and then take a snapshot and create an image from that. So it is a bit snappier. Uh, you will shorten the time it takes to provision your dev boxes. Um, but it also comes with uh, a few more uh, bits and snags, I would say. I have not have the best of luck in using this feature. So in my case, I'm still using the, the image definitions and not the custom images feature. You can see that I have a uh, image creation process uh, in progress here. Um, I've yet to get this actually working. So yeah. Um, but now that we have this image definition, we can check our dev box pools. And you can see that I have a custom pool, which uses the definition project catalog dev box customization, which is that YAML file that I uh, talked about earlier. And if I were to create a new pool, uh, you see that under definition, I have dev box definitions, which is your standard way of doing dev boxes. And then I also have the image definition section where my dev box customization is listed. And that is how a fully working setup like this would work, uh, well, would look from an admin's perspective. Uh, but the the file itself, it looks, um, let me just jump on over to VS Code here. Uh, this is the uh, team customization file that I've used. And you see that it's quite similar, similar to the file that we showed you earlier, which I used in the individual customization. The only real difference is the image here. And you can specify any image that is supported um, by DevBox. So um, in that, I mean, when you go to create a DevBox definition, you have a list of source images to choose from. Any of them can be used here. In my case, I'm using the, the Windows Enterprise, um, Windows 11, not with Visual Studio Code uh, and Visual Studio Enterprise, uh, Microsoft 365 apps and all that jazz. I'm using the base image and then I'm using Winget to install Visual Studio Code. I'm using Winget to install Vivaldi and I'm also cloning uh, my repo into a local folder. Same exact as before. So that is how working setup would look from an admin's perspective. Now, you could, um, you could argue that as a project admin, team admin or whatever, you could just as well use 
uh, write the YAML file, uh, distribute it to your devs and tell them to use it to customize their dev boxes. But how often does any user do exactly as they're told? In my experience, not that often. So by using team customizations, you are, uh, you make sure that every dev box created uh, at least have your set of customizations as a foundation. So that's quite neat. Uh, oh, and I did promise to show you how to enable those tasks uh, used in the individual customization design. So uh, let me jump back into the portal and back to my dev uh, center here. And now if you have a um, now, if you ha already have a dev center set up without support for these tasks, the way to do it is to go to uh, catalogs and then you'll hit add, uh, give it a fancy name and then just check this radio button for Microsoft's quick start uh, catalog. And then, of course, hit add. If you don't already have a dev center, you can quite easily enable this during the dev center creation. So I would hit create and then I would check this box here for dev, sen uh, dev box customization tasks. So uh, when you do that, just make sure uh, to uh, be aware of the information that is stated uh, down here. So um, the enabling uh, all of uh, the tasks in the quick start guide, uh, including the ability to uh, use PowerShell script task. It does allow, um, you, you do give your devs a whole lot of access. access. So make sure that you understand the risks um, that, that imply. To get around this, you could do as it's stated here, that you could uh, create your own restricted catalog uh, with a reduced set of tasks, you know, removing the PowerShell script task and, you know, use that uh, instead of using the uh, quick start catalog provided by Microsoft. So um, let me know in the comments if that is something that you want me to make a video on. And with that, I hope you found some value in this video um, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.